Now this is what Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announced. She announced a fund to revive stalled housing projects across the country. This will be a 25,000 crore rupees fund where the government is going to contribute an initial corpus of 10,000 crore rupees. The SBI and LIC will together contribute the balance 15,000 crore rupees. Now SBI caps will manage the fund and in future this fund will be open to private investors meaning that the corpus could increase from the 25,000 crore rupees that the government is looking at today. Now money from this fund will be given as loans to housing projects that are stuck for want of money. Now the finance minister has made it very clear that this will include, include projects from companies that have NPAs which means that companies that have bad loans which they have not been able to pay off. It will also include projects from companies that have uh, declared bankruptcy. They have in fact approached the NCLT for liquidation. The caveat, projects of companies where liquidation has already begun will not be funded. Also, companies that have to be funded will have to be net positive. Now, what does net positive exactly mean is what we are going to check with our uh, panel of experts. Uh, but we can tell you this much, net positive means that your assets are more than your liabilities. Now, the FM also explained that projects across completion levels will be eligible for funding, which means that whether a project is 50% uh, complete, 60% complete, 70 or 80% complete, it will be eligible to get funds from uh, this uh, alternate investment fund. However, priority, like she pointed out, will be given to projects that are near completion. Now, according to the government's own estimates, there are around 1,600 stalled housing projects with about 4.58 lakh housing units that are stuck for want of money. Now, the government does hope that this fund will revive construction in such projects so that home buyers are able to get position of their homes at the earliest and also those home buyers who've stopped paying their EMIs will then start paying those EMIs again. The idea is to revive the entire investment consumption cycle. Now, we'll be asking our panel of experts whether that is going to be possible and most importantly, whether people who have been waiting for years and years to get the key to their homes, to get the position of their homes, will finally be able to do so. You're welcome to join us on uh, this discussion, but let me uh, quickly go across uh, to KK Mistry. He's the CEO of HDFC and uh, we had spoken to him a little while ago. Listen in to what he had to say to this big announcement from Nirmala Sitaraman. Yeah. Uh, so to begin with, uh, uh, the, the announcement, what uh, what the finance minister announced is that, uh, so she has expanded it, uh, the pur purview of the fund to cover uh, NPAs and companies that have gone into NCLT as, that, yeah, as well. Okay. As a banker, uh, how do you see that proposal? I won't talk as a banker, I'll talk as someone who understands the system. So, uh, there are a number of projects which have been stuck because of last mile funding. Now, why, why, why is that last mile funding not coming for these projects? The reason is that historically when projects were undertaken, 70-80% of the funds required from the project were decided or were fixed up front. The remaining 20-25, in some cases 30% used to come from sale of under construction property. And that money was used to do the last mile funding. Now, because of a variety of reasons, consumers today, people to prefer to buy a property when the property is completed rather than buy a property when it's under construction. So the last mile funding which used to come from sale of property is not, not coming. Now, because of that, there is a liquidity shortage at the hands of the developer as on account of which he's not able to complete the construction. Because there is a liquidity shortage, he's also not able to pay back the loans which he had taken for doing that project. When he's not able to pay back the loans, the loans become a not performing loan. Now, if the, if the money from the fund was not used to provide funding for these uh, NPA accounts, then a very large part of the, the stock projects would not sort of get the funding that is required for them to come out of the situation. So I think it's a big announcement. I think it's an important announcement. Uh, when the original announcement was made, we had said that it is important that it should also cover the NPA accounts and the NCNT accounts. So I'm very glad that has been done.
Right. Uh, so would you would you then uh, agree that this is something that will benefit a you a large number of uh, distressed home buyers? Uh, which are the key markets do you see where uh, you know they would be able to benefit? No, I'm sure it will help a large number of uh, projects. Uh, also, it will help projects all over the country. I mean, I can't tell you any specific location where it will help or not. It will help most very many projects, which are stuck. But obviously, what I see is the viability of the project. Because of passage of time, there would be some projects which have become unviable today. If a project has become unviable, it will not get the benefit of the fund. The fund is obviously going to invest only in projects which are viable. So there will be projects. There, there will be a number of stock projects which are viable, and there will also be a number of stock projects which are not viable. Anymore. Well, that was uh, Kiki Mystery of uh, CEO of HGFC, and uh, now I'm joined by a stellar panel. We have with us uh, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, National President of Naredco and Senior VP of Asochem, Ramesh Jogani, Managing Director and CEO of IPAL Fund Managers, Jayashree Kurup, who's the Head of Content and Advisory at Magic Bricks Realty Services Limited, RR Chaturvedi, CMD of Shripati Group, Baman Irani, MD and CEO of Rustamji Group. Also joining us is uh, Parimal Keshrov, Senior Advocate and uh, Solicitor, and uh, Naveen Raheja, who is the Chairman and MD of the Raheja Group. Uh, I welcome all of you to the show and I'll uh, begin with a quick round. Uh, I'll, uh, I would want all of you all to, in fact, comment on what we've heard the Finance Minister announced today and what do you think uh, will be the impact primarily on uh, home buyers, uh, Niranjan Hiranandani, if we could begin with you. Well, I'll go across to Baman Irani. Baman Irani, uh, what do you think uh, will be the impact uh, on home buyers primarily? Will this enable people to finally access their homes? So, Kavita, I think this is a step in the right direction, and we at Credai wholly welcome. The Honorable Finance Ministers, uh, you know, uh, following up on our recommendations that uh, even projects which are NPAs or held up in NCLT as long as there was no winding up ordered would get an opportunity to get funded. Having said that, I think uh, this will have a massive impact, uh, you know, because it's a step in the right direction when 10,000 crores are being provided by the government and she's asking, uh, you know, another 15,000 crores to be provided by uh, LIC as well as SBI. Uh, this would definitely mean that projects that have been held up or, or, or are, let's say, financially viable but not getting the funding today would get the funding uh, for development. Uh, a lot of home buyers, lakhs of them, uh, would, would find that this would ease out their situation. They would make further payments uh, as per, you know, the progress of work that takes place on site. And these would allow projects that are net worth positive with, you know, positive cash flows, etc., being able to complete, uh, you know, get, get completed. And I think uh, it, it will overall uh, see an impact because a move by the government always helps raise the uh, emotional quotient of the people as well. And people will uh, look forward to, you know, getting their homes and be happier. And I wish this uh, announcement would have come before Diwali. It would have made the Diwali a lot brighter. But like they say, uh, even today is a great day to start for the rest of the year. Well, Bhavan Irani, uh, it didn't come before Diwali, but it did come before Christmas, so we'll probably have a <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But mm. let me go across to, let me go across to, uh, uh, you know, RR Chaturvedi, who's also in the studio with us. Uh, what do you think? Is this something that will, uh, you know, bring the cheer back, especially to home buyers who've been waiting for years to get the keys to their homes? It is a great step. If you remember, I've been talking on this channel. Our industry works on sentiments, basically. So today, government has acknowledged there is a problem and they have come up with some solution. If this is a solution here with the government, naturally, all the flat purchasers would also get a boost and they would also start contributing towards the construction and towards the payment for the completion of the project. So ultimately, both coming together, government and the customer would help in completing the project. Ultimately, it will be benefited for the customer first because they'll get the home completed early and timely completion will help them to take possession soon. So this will help ultimately the industry because we have been talking on this channel, our industry is a leader in all respect. And till this industry is revived, no other industry would revive. So today, as our friend has said, this step should have come for earlier, but better late than never. Today, 
it has come and if it go a long way. Only challenge what would remain with us is to understand what would be the rate of interest on that loan, what they would be extending to the developers. As in general case, when government as a rera, they have freezed a loan uh, uh, interest for MCLR plus 2 percent, I think they should go ahead with that only and they should fix up MCLR plus 2 percent for this alternative special fund because ultimately this is only for the stress project and once you, once you realize this is a stress project, you cannot expect more benefit out of the stress projects and you have to go for a minimum rate of return that is MCLR plus 2 percent. Number two, timeline of implementation should have been also planned now in a better way. If the execution, planning, everything goes well, it will really help the industry to do well. Right. Uh, so, two, uh, two key uh, areas there where we need clarity. But let me go across to Naveen Raheja. Naveen Raheja, you, uh, you are present in a market that has uh, probably uh, the mo maximum number of uh, distressed uh, projects. Uh, now, tell us this. One is, of course, how do you see uh, this announcement? And also, a key caveat that the finance minister mentioned, that the project has to be net worth positive. Uh, how many projects will that essentially be able to cover? Uh, it's a great day for the home buyers. Uh, although it has come very late, had it come about four or five years ago, the Indian economy and the home buyers and all this negativity around real estate would not have been there. I remember at that time I was uh, chairing the Redco when this proposal was uh, uh, given to the government, to the Diti Ayog also. And uh, it was rigorously followed by me personally to see that it happens. But it has happened. And today is a great day for all Indian home buyers who have uh, actually left hope. They had left hope about, about recovering their money. They were suffering with their, uh, you know, home rentals on one side and EMIs on the other side. I think there is little more they will have to wait. Uh, I would request the government to look into the things in a much faster way now and uh, try to actually disburse the funds uh, as fast as possible and to see that these projects and these deliveries happen within next one or one and a half years. Uh, that, that is number one. Number two, I also find because of the distress in the uh, real estate sector, the NBFCs have also run into trouble. And since last about 8-10 months, we are seeing that NBFCs are not even disbursing EMIs against ongoing construction projects. So that aspect also needs to be addressed if NBFCs who have sanctioned home loans, who have partly disbursed and then stopped, I think this money should also cater partially to resolve that issue as well that if NBFCs are not able to pay EMIs of customers towards uh, construction lead projects, then at least they, the, the fund should take care of that aspect as well, so that the projects can get completed. Third most important aspect is that the, it refers to mainly catering to mid-segment and affordable housing. I personal, personally feel it should cater to every project. You should not do pick and choose. Money is precious for every customer and every segment and the real estate must revive as a whole, not selectively. So the limit should be a, a, a good limit. If they are at all going to limit the price of the apartment, I think in metropolitan cities, it should not be less than 2.5 crores because in bigger cities like Delhi, like uh, uh, number of projects in Gurgaon, number of projects in Noida, number of projects in Mumbai and other metropolitan cities. I think there are several projects which are, which have a ticket size ranging from 50 lakhs to even for 5 crores. So the limit should be little liberal so that every project is covered. Uh, uh, thirdly, 
uh, it is that you know the project should be radar registered uh, we also personally feel it should be radar registered and as far as it is going to cover nclt npas and everything i think is a great great decision by the government and i look forward that the industry should revive in the coming uh, few months i think uh, no later than uh, what people expected to happen right. and it is a it is a great day great day for real estate it is a great day for customers in this country who have been waiting for long precisely uh, but well, let me quickly uh, take our viewers through uh, what was uh, announced the fine print over here uh, this is what we picked up from the uh, press release issued by the ministry of finance now uh, the funds will be used to complete housing units that are worth less than 2 crore rupees in uh, mumbai and the mmr region uh, a housing unit that is worth less than 1.5 crore rupees in the delhi ncr region in ahmedabad and in other metros and a housing unit that is worth less than 1 crore rupees in other cities so if your home is in a project the which where the homes cost for cost falls within these brackets and the company the that particular project and or the company is net positive then it could stand a chance at getting funding we will find out what net positive uh, means over here uh, because while a developer uh, developers on the panel are of course gung ho about uh, the announcement the devil lies in the details let me go across uh, to ramesh jogani ramesh jogani what does it mean when we say net positive and how many of the uh, projects that are actually stuck uh, out in the market are will fall under the net positive <coughs> category so while this is a great announcement but this parameter of it being net positive is a dampener in my view point because most of the projects have come to such a stage because they are no longer net positive they are no longer viable so the government needs to work on the viability of these pro projects the way they can work on the viability is uh, make the gst set uh, make it uh, gst should be free or they should give a set off to the developer the interest rates should come down the moratorium period of paying interest should be extended so that's how it will become net worth positive otherwise i see a huge challenge in these projects becoming net worth positive no, but, but ramesh ramesh i'm sorry, are, to, I'm sorry to uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you over there i'm sorry to interrupt you over there stop in between sorry i'm sorry to interrupt you over there but what does net positive essentially mean does it mean that if i have a project yeah. which is stuck which has 100 flats and i've sold 70 of those and 30 have been unsold and the project is stuck does that qualify as net positive is that what it means or does it mean that i uh, you know that as a company i should so have cash so net positive it... so my reading of net positive is that there should be profits in the project to good enough to pay back to the fund which has been set up by the government and if there are if there were profits in the first case and if they have started off i would assume that they were, they would have had financial closure but since they are no longer net positive projects have got stuck uh, so either there's a demand crisis or either the affordability is an issue or the cost is too high so all these issues need to be addressed by net positive means it has to be profitable now profitability according to me is a very broad uh, way of looking at it for me if a project has got stuck either it's because of lack of funding uh, and but at the same time if the projects have taken off and if is they're not giving to virgin projects they're only given to projects which have taken off so my take is that there would have been a financial closure there would uh, 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 but despite that the projects have got stalled so either it's because of the nbfc crisis the developers have not got money or genuinely the pro projects are not viable so i believe that a lot of projects would fall in the cat category which are not viable which is not net positive and th that challenge will continue that's my take on net positive how much percent of projects would uh, fall in that category which would not be uh, which would not fall under this uh, which would not be eligible uh obviously i do not have statistics but at the rate 
developers are going NPA and the number of cases which have been filed against them uh, clearly indicates that's a huge amount. But anyway, so having said that, this is a huge uh, uh, move by the government and at the same time if they can bring down the cost to make it viable, uh, I think a lot of projects would come out from this category of net positive. They could become net positive. Right. Uh, Jayashree, you've been tracking the sector for uh, decades now. You tell us, uh, will this really help or should it? Should the scheme have been tweaked a little more? Because when the fund was announced initially, uh, they were, the government was very clear. They didn't want NPAs. They didn't want companies that were in the NCLT to be part of this. They have now uh, expanded it to include that. Should it have been tweaked a little more? No, I think, I think it can work. And I'll tell you, uh, the question that you asked earlier to Ramesh, let me answer that for you. Uh, the De uh, Noida authorities, the RERA uh, UP, had conducted a, a forensic audit of all the projects. As you know, that is the largest market where there have been un incomplete projects. And 50% of the projects were cash, cash flow positive. Now, what makes 25% uh, they uh, estimated was the number of projects that, are, that cannot be revived and there has to be in infusion of fresh funds so there has to be some other way of doing it. But uh, 25 other, uh, about 50% can be uh, taken forward immediately. 50% needs a little more tweaks and 25% is which uh, the projects that are really going to be stuck. And they have categorized it like that. And uh, in what makes a, ca a project net positive? there is either consumer re receivables left. If you had to pay 100% of the cost and you've paid only about 40%, 60% is the receivable. If you've paid 95%, 5% is the receivable. These receivables, when received from the consumers, can make the, uh, the project, uh, that is some of the receivables that come in. The other is that if there's more land left to be sold, if that land can be liquidated and that money brought in, then you can uh, complete the project. The third one is whether, uh, you know, the last tranche of money from the lender has to come in. And when you reach a certain stage of the project, the lender can give in that money and then take out all the money uh, profits out of it. In some of the cases, <laughs> they are also giving enhanced FAR so that there are unsold inventories which can be sold. Now, all this makes a project cash flow positive. So, uh, why aren't these projects going through to completion? A lot of projects have. In the NCR, I think there has been a lot of projects that went through to completion. Developers took over each other's projects and completed wherever there was a, uh, wherever it could be done. There is one thing that has been done, and that is that you know when the last tranche of fund, that stress fund that comes in. Right now, there's a lack of liquidity. When that fund comes in, it starts the cycle of uh, growth and more receivables come in, more uh, sales happen when the project, when a tower is complete, and that brings in the money. So I think this is a really good move, Kavita. It just needs to be executed well under the ages of some uh, uh, agency like RERA. Uh, right. And uh, in fact, they've also got uh, professionals to manage it. You have SBI Caps, which will be managing it. Uh, they're also talking of uh, opening up the That's fund right. to private investors, which means uh, the very fact that private investors will be putting in money will, will bring in more uh, due diligence. So I'm guessing, Jeshri, that concern should be uh, well taken care of. Uh, yes. But my question to uh, Parimal Shroff, and Parimal Shroff is a very, very yes. respected uh, lawyer. Uh, uh, Parimal Shroff, tell us this. Projects get stuck not just because of lack of funds. There are, li there are litigation issues as well, which is one of the reasons why projects get stuck. Now, uh, will that... You th do you think that would be like, you know, a bump in the road for the completion of projects? Now that the, f uh, the funding problem at least seems to be solved. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that this particular uh, new special window which has been opened by the decision of the union cabinet today is not for all. It is only for 1,600 projects which have been identified across the country. And to them that this particular facility, or I would say that uh, the financial aid is going to be provided. And that too, provided they qualify further. Now, as a result, you asked me a question for what the projects really get stuck and why do the projects not develop and go into a long spin. 
the answer is that the most difficult aspect of any business or industry in this country is that of a real estate development. And there is not one, apart from the sanctioning and the planning authority and apart from environment and apart from PILs and apart from internet sign partners dispute and apart from lack of funds and the stressing out of the project and the project overrunning the time schedule. There are several reasons which make a good project go bad. So to my mind, the uh, issues relating to the, uh, the uh, what stalls the project cannot be resolved by this particular policy decision of the government. But this is a mood changer. I would say that right now, nobody looked at real estate industry was a complaint. And today we have got a union cabinet stepping in and saying that we are going to provide for a 25,000 crore fund for maybe 1,600 projects which are stalled with 4.58 lakh estimated tenements that we are looking at. But at least this is what the government has come out with. And this is going to have a overall a sea change into the thinking and the lending, the credit facility, the, the way the customer is looking, the way the investors are looking, the way the, the actual users are going to come forward. Because there was a complete washing out of the trust in the real estate industry which prevailed and that created is a complete sense of lull, which I believe that uh, the lifting of the mood has taken place with this particular aspect. Though there are a lot of policy issues which are involved in this particular resolution, which requires to starting with what is a net worth positive. Now, net worth positive is going to have several meanings unless we see the investment policy, which RBI and SBI is going to really draft out. That will take us into that who will really qualify out of this. It is not for all of them that this particular, pro this is not a loan mella. But at the same point of time, to my mind, it is a mood lifter. And it is surely making us feel that the government is now here to hold your hand and take you through and see if you deserve and if you are going to qualify, you will get this particular facility. Now the interest rate, the repayment facility, what happens to the balance unsold premises, how will the people who were stuck for all these years and for the period, how will they react, how will they meet their liability and obligations. All those aspects will have to be seen, but that's a matter of detailing and which will probably take care in the coming few weeks. But uh, the, the policy has really opened a new era and which I believe is going to be very helpful to the real estate industry uh, across the country and is going to be very positive uh, development in the, in the industry. Right. Uh, let me let me bring in Bhaman Irani here. Bhaman Irani, uh, now we know that over the last uh, few years, ever since, uh, you know, uh, real estate went into this uh, uh, cycle, We've seen that banks and then NBFCs uh, were worried of lending to developers. Now, with something like this coming in, uh, with the hope that a developer who has a project that is stuck uh, might be able to avail of this money, say gets this money, is able to restart a project, would that then make the developer, uh, you know, a more attractive to a banker? Uh, do you think it will be easier for them to raise money then? Let me, let me answer the question a little differently. Uh, first of all, this is a move that we welcome as Kredai. Uh, we congratulate the home buyer in terms of, you know, the fact that the government is definitely taking cognizance of the pain that uh, the industry has gone through and, and what they are going through. But what I think is, uh, which Parimal Bhai quoted is, let the details all come out. Let us read the fine print. Let us hope it's all implementable guidelines. Let us let us hope that there are timeline related uh, you know uh, targets put over there hopefully they'll they'll put um, very good uh, financial in, you know financially savvy uh, people in charge of it and let them implement the entire thing but what is very very important is we need a one time restructuring that can be allowed by banks and you know nbfcs so that they can go ahead and without you know going through the provisioning norms be able to go ahead and fund uh, their own uh, developers, places where they've put in money in the past, which will allow them to kind of restructure, um, restructure their uh, you know, loan to that particular portfolio. And they themselves are in a position today to be able to see that these projects are completed. I don't think, A, we should wait for a project to stall. I think we should 
try and uh, work with the project while it is still going through or is still in a position to be able to stand on its own two feet, understand the problem at that point of time and then go ahead and assist it. And I think all our, uh, you know, today if you see, the banks are flush with funds, but are they being able to take decisions given the, you know, uh, uh, guidelines of, uh, you know, RBI in this matter? I'm saying that if the government has moved in this direction, I'll be only too happy if they continue their interaction with, with uh, you know, developer uh, bodies like Kredai and, 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 and go ahead and understand where else they can positively step in to be able to make uh, a change in the industry. And what we need is a lot of changes. Um, I, I think the industry itself is going through tremendous pain, whether it is the financial institutions or whether it is the real estate uh, uh, fraternity. And this is not all their own doing. Uh, or rather not, not only the fault of the industry. This industry supports 250 plus other industries. We're the second largest employer for category uh, you know, C and D labor in, in the country. We provide uh, uh, an impetus or a growth to your GDP, to our GDP. The things that we need done uh, by the government are uh, plenty because of the right. pain that it has been through. Sure, right. Sure. Right. And uh, Bhavan, this is something that the finance minister has also been speaking about, uh, about, uh, you know, the, the fact that the real estate industry does or is also tied into a number of other industries. We have a caller on the line, Vinod Sood, who's joining us from Ludhiana. And yes, we are answering calls. So if you have any questions to ask about uh, this announcement from the finance minister, pick up your phone, call in numbers on your screen. Vinod Sood, go ahead. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Ma'am. Uh, I, my opinion about finance ministers, this package is that the package should have covered the government agencies started housing projects also. I am talking of a project started by uh, Improvement Trust Jalandhar in Punjab. There are three, four projects, housing projects started by Improvement Trust Jalandhar. One of the projects Surya Enclave Extension. It was started in 2011. And most of the buyers who were allotted plots, they have paid full amount. But they have, you now the Improvement Trust people have not developed uh, in the uh, year 2014, the people paid full amount. Improvement Trust says that despite their best efforts because they had taken loan from Punjab National Bank and Punjab National Bank. Right. Uh, so, so, we know you want to know if government uh, government owned or government backed projects are essentially covered under this. I think it should be the case and especially if it is an affordable housing project. But let me bring in Naveen Raheja. Uh, Naveen Raheja, what do you think? I think they, although they have not clarified, it is very essential to cover the, uh, you know, government-backed projects, be it slum redevelopment projects under PPP mode, be it uh, other government-sponsored affordable housing projects. I think they should all get covered uh, wherever even the government departments or even government agency or authority has put in its... Uh, equity or they own the land, whatever is the case, it should, it should happen. Secondly, very important aspect which I wanted to highlight, Kavita, again I'm going back upon Actually, the I'm just segment for you. which this, this will be available. The segment, you know, in... Huh, go the, on, go the, on, finish your point. May, may I continue? Yeah, yeah, please the, finish your point. The segment, hello? Please finish, yeah. make your point. The segment, you know... For uh, Mumbai metropolitan uh, area, 2 crores and for uh, NCR, 1.5 crore. It is a very vague definition. A project can have different type of apartments. There can be two bedroom apartments starting at 60 lakhs and there can be five bedroom apartments at 2.5 crores. So, you know, you when you have to help a project, you have to help a project to complete the whole project. Because all these different budget apartments might exist in a single tower also and in a single project as well. So you cannot define whether the limit will be 1.5 or 2 or 1. I think it should be across all the projects. Secondly, the NBFCs and uh, other financial institutions 
which could not extend their sanction limits to developers. There are such cases. Uh, project has been sanctioned 200 crores, then BFC uh, disbursed 120 crores, then it ran into trouble, financial crisis, balance 80 crores, they didn't dis disburse, the entire project went, went for a six because that complete financial modeling was based upon 200 crores. So the project gets stuck, then the home buyers who have taken loans from these people, these NBFCs, they are not getting the, their EMI that are not being disbursed. I think all these aspects need a detailing while the you know final final fine, fine tune of the policy comes forward that uh, how and in what method they will ensure that each and every project gets completed. As far as it goes to net net worth positive, it is very simple to understand any project which will repay back the loans, which will give delivery completed, completed project to the customers. And after that, it is able to pay back the, as first priority to this fund also, which is a hand-holding stress fund. Or you may, I would ideally say, it should go on the recommendations of RERA, because RERA will be knowing which are the projects which need a support, which need a hand-holding immediately. So it should take help of RERA as well. But the money sh should, get, you know, everybody should get repaid and there should be some profit left. Uh, right, right. Uh, we we, even we, after we have a lot of, of demands. Right, we ha do have if a lot of demands coming in. There is some left that may be given right, to developers. Right, Reja, we do have a lot of demands coming in from our developers on the panel. But let's bring the focus back to the home buyer. Uh, Jeshi, you had a point uh, to make. Go ahead and then I have a question for you. Yes. Yeah, uh, the you know the, the RERA authorities have clarified that whether it is a government body, it is an investment trust, or any any trust, uh, if the project is going to be marketed to the consumer, it comes under the purview of RERA, which means it is registered and it has a RERA registration number. So. These any project that is marketed, irrespective of who's marketing it, authorities, private developers, investment trusts, or whatever, all of them come under RERA, and therefore all of them should be uh, eligible for this uh, stress fund. What Vinod needs to do is to find out whether his project has a RERA registration number. If it doesn't have, please uh, approach your RERA authorities, make a complaint that there is no regist RERA registration. Once that registration number is there, you are... Uh, <coughs> on par with all other projects. Right. Uh, also, uh, Jeshri, the other big question. Now, uh, and this is something that, uh, that, you know, that home buyers have been asking as well. The money will be given to the developer over here. Who is going to monitor how the money is going to be spent? Which, the reason I'm asking you this is that we know there are certain developers who've taken money from home buyers and invested it in other projects. So how do we know where the money is going? Uh, Kavita, any money that comes into any real estate project in the future, as of now, goes through the escrow accounting system, where 70% uh, goes into com construction, 30% the developer ca uh, can take. Now, when the stress fund comes to, it will go through an escrow account, and RERA will be monitoring the, uh, the entire thing. You know that there was a mega RERA conclave happening in Lucknow uh, two days ago, and this was one of the points that was raised, that any money that comes to the uh, to, for completion of the projects will be used for completion and RERA will be monitoring it closely. Right. So, Parimal Shroff, the, the fact that uh, one of the caveats in this uh, entire this uh, scheme, this uh, funding scheme, is that a project has to be RERA registered, that in itself gives a sort of uh, safety cushion of sorts for the home buyer? No, no, that's a... Absolutely. The, question, the issue is that the, the qualification is the entry point that the project should be RERA registered, number one. The question which you asked previously, who will really look into that, how the amount is utilized? The press release talks about it very clearly and candidly, that it will be paid phase-wise. There will be investment manager. In this case, it is going to be SBI Corp, which is going to look into the matter and say that how the investment is being utilized. And then there is an advisory committee, there is an investment committee, and there is an overseeing body, which is going to see how this amount is deployed, utilized, and how the project is completed. So I believe believe that the misuse or abuse of the fund 
or the funds getting shifted from one project to the other seems to be a distant uh, 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 rather possibility. But only thing is that all this filtration may not delay the project because these are all stalled projects which requires to be given an impetus. And therefore, this particular scheme will have to be done in a manner whereby the matter can be expedited. To my mind, RERA registration is a great relief. And now we are in the age and time where the project cannot be without a RERA registration coming up where there are more than eight units and more than 500 square meter of area. So I believe that practically it's a, it's a, it's a part of reality that you, all projects will have to be, whether affordable or middle income group, will have to be RERA registered and that will qualify into coming into this. But more importantly, I want to make one point here. Right. That NCLT projects are also qualifying to get this particular uh, amount, that is going to have a, some change in the, uh, we will have to also have a, a statutory change because there are moratorium orders which are passed under the NCLT regime. Once that comes, then the entire project comes to a standstill. So there will have to be a, some sort of a statutory amendment which will have to be brought in. That the moratorium will not be coming in the, because every moratorium does not come before after the liquidation. It comes, in fact, before the liquidation orders. And as a result of which, to make the project viable and moving, we need to have a relaxation in this moratorium order provided for once that the project qualifies to get this particular this special window uh, assistance from the U uh, union government's uh, new scheme, which we have been discussing. Right. Uh, we have Samir on the phone line from uh, Mumbai. Uh, Samir, go on. Hello. Yes, Samir. Uh, good, uh, good evening, madam. Good evening. I uh, just want to ask two questions to the panelists. One of the, uh, the government is providing 25,000 crore in totality. Uh, Hello. Yes, yes, go on, go on. We're uh, listening. Uh, 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 the government is providing 25,000 crores uh, for to in totality, and the project is uh, 1,600 crores, a stall project. Even if I consider the 50% of projects uh, uh, finalized for uh, refinancing, the amount comes to 30 crores. Is the 30 crores enough for a uh, project? Uh, one more question. Another question is this what is the maximum uh, cap will be in per project by the government? The maximum cap. Uh, well, uh, Jayashree, would you want to take that uh, if you've gone through the entire uh, uh, the press release and the announcement? They haven't. They haven't said how much will be the cap. They haven't said how much will be the uh, cap on the uh, uh, funding. But it's it's not that the uh, 1600 projects you divide the entire amount and give it to out to them. It is each project is assessed on how much money is required. It, this is almost like seed funding, Kavita. So what happens is that the uh, money comes in. It uh, helps restart the project. And once the project starts, that cycle of finance starts. The consumer's receivable comes in. The uh, you know the project, one tower gets completed, the unsold inventories start getting sold because completed projects, there are still buyers for it. And that's how the, the project itself will raise its own money. So it's not that this 30 crore is going to complete the whole project. It is that you will restart the uh, cycle of investment. Right. So the money is seed funding is what Jayashree is telling us. Also, uh, and quick question now to uh, Ramesh Jogani, if you can explain to us uh, what the, what the finance minister said is that the 25,000 crores is just the initial uh, corpus that they will be opening it up into uh, private investors as well, which means more money could theoretically flow in. Now, we know that in the in Bombay, we, we in Mumbai, we did see some fund houses try to come up with a fund for distressed projects. Uh, tell us, is there interest from private players to actually put their money in something like this? So, obviously, as a fund manager, you want to see whether the project is good enough to give you returns. And a lot of work was done on a lot of projects which required funding, and they discussed with the lenders. But as of now, the lenders are not willing, take, willing to take a haircut. And that's what doesn't make the project viable as far as Bombay is concerned. I've been studying Bombay projects. So, if the funds... Uh, Obviously, this will open up to a lot of sovereign funds. Uh, 
you'll have uh, funds coming from all over the world. This 25,000 crores is just an initiation. It will, it can go up to two lakh crores since the government is involved. So money is not a challenge. My, I'm repeating again, if the lenders do not take a haircut or if the interest rate doesn't come down or if your restructuring of loan doesn't happen, then I believe, firmly believe that a lot of these projects are not feasible. I'm talking about Mumbai and, and more so with the two crore category, the most of the Mumbai projects won't fit in. But uh, having said that, we have to work on the, afford, the uh, uh, what is net worth positive and the net worth positive, a lot of steps will be have to be taken and lenders need to take a haircut if you expect funds to come and invest in it. Because I, I know of two or three projects where the funds moved out because the banks are not yet geared up to take a haircut. So uh, these things have to, would have to be worked upon for, to attract large capital. Right. And uh, I have very little time left, uh, Jayashree. Uh, one big question uh, that I need to ask you before we go. Now, we know that there are projects that are stuck. We also know that a lot of these projects, that some of these projects, I'm sorry, uh, would have developers who might uh, be in jail. There would be some developers who would have probably approached the NCLT uh, for liquidations. The, the ones who have already gone into liquidation are, of course, not covered. Now, what happens in those cases where the developer is not present? The home buyers have come together, they formed an association or a group of sorts. Can home buyers then approach this fund yeah. uh, to, you know, sort of bail them out and to help them to restart the project? The home... home. Oh. Yes, they can. Uh, what Down is happening can. right now is if the developer is not available and the, uh, the buyers have uh, formed a group, Right. Uh, Formed a group. Then what happens is that they can approach Rara. Rara deregisters the project from the developer. Uh, it uh, it works together and they, they put the project together. And that's happening in a lot of NCR projects. I guess that would be the, you know, Rara would be the medium through which you would approach the government. Okay, so where Rara, where Rara is... Uh, putting, getting people get together, it could be a case, it could be the case. R.R. Chaturvedi, you did not agree with what uh, Jashi said. Very quickly, I have a minute left on the show. I would come back to the first original issue of uh, net worth positive. Basically, uh, any NPA that have happened today, it is only because of the cash flow, not because of the positiveness or wealth capital about the fund or about the project itself. Very rarely, where the builders have taken the project and they are going to make profit out of it. Today, it is only issue of cash flow, why they have become NPA. That okay. is number one issue. Ultimately, the project would have a net worth poverty effect. Number two, if the project is not having a net worth poverty effect, and if the flats have been sold and builders have collected the money, and the very little amount is left to complete the construction, in that eventuality, I have seen the flat owners, they come forward when they see a confidence. And this is going to give a confidence because it is not only the amount which it is going to be pumped in by the AIFF, it will be also in a monitoring agency. Right. A right. professional agency. Uh, I'm afraid I have to cut you off over just there. A, just a minute. Nee, nee, uh, Arashatu, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't have time on the hmm. show there. I know there, there's a lot to discuss. Yeah. It's early days yet, but the big story uh, tonight is the fact that the finance minister, the government of India has in fact come out with a scheme to help people who are stuck in distressed housing projects. Now, there are the scheme does come with caveats, as it should, and uh, there are a lot of... Uh, questions that are being asked and I'm sure that over the next few days uh, we will be getting answers to all of those questions but the big story here is there is a chance that you could probably get the keys to that home which you prob which you had booked say 10 or 15 years ago and you've been waiting for position it should of course a lot of home buyers today are going to go to bed with a very very relieved uh, hard today and like uh, Bhavan Irani told us earlier, it does look like Christmas has come early for the real estate sector and for home buyers. Thank you for watching.